Hello, everybody. Welcome into another episode of the Fantasy Pros Football Podcast. I am Ryan Warmly, joined today by a couple of Texas boys, Derek Brown, Debra, as you all know, and Scott Bogman. Guys, thanks for coming on. Bogman, thank you for being our guest today. Hey, thanks for having me, man. This is going to be fun. We are talking about some running backs to avoid. Before we get in, we'll have a little chit chat here. I do want to ask you, Debra, how was your 4th of July? We are recording here on the 5th of July. Oh, it was a good time, man. Um, I can't complain at all. I'm not going to give any teasers, any spoilers, but I did see the new Spider-Verse movie. And it, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for thank you for not giving say- any spoilers because I have not seen <laughs> oh, it yet. Man. I, I appreciate okay. it. I, I am a massive uh, do not spoil movies person. Like, I still I'm old enough to remember when LaShawn McCoy had the tweet and then he like oh, gave away the ending yes. of Endgame. I was like, all right, he's blocked. You're dead to me. I don't even care. Like, I was like, I don't <laughs> want to see anything else you have to say for the rest of bottom history. of the draft uh-uh. list because <laughs> yeah, of your spoilers. Going. That's yeah, right. LaShawn McCoy now and running back to avoid on Twitter. We, of course, are going to talk about <laughs> running backs to avoid in fantasy drafts this year. You see how I did that, guys. Uh, this right. is going to be based on the expert consensus rankings, half PPR rankings. So, guys, based on where they're ranked there, that you guys, running back specifically, do not want to draft this year. At their current cost, we're going to go through some early round guys, some mid round guys, and then some later round guys. We'll start with the biggest names at the top. Bogman, give me your three running backs that you were avoiding in drafts this year. Uh, My first one is Brees Hall, and I'm not that much lower on him. ZCR is 11. I have him at 12. He's awesome. I'm not talking talent here, but I am. If you're drafting today or anytime before camp, you know, we just don't know about him is his Knee tear was cleaner than J.K. Dobbins, who ran into a bunch of problems last year. And Fitz and I on the Dynasty pod talk about that all the time. We kind of disagree about that. Sala said that they were very optimistic about his return for week one of the regular season at the end of May. But one of their better beat writers, Zach Rosenblatt from The Athletic, did not share his optimism, saying he does not expect Brees Hall to be ready for camp. They've been involved in Dalvin Cook rumors. They drafted Izzy Abanacanda. So... I just I'm a little leery on drafting a guy that might be injured going into the season that those are my knocks on Brees Hall. The talent is still amazing, uh, still a top guy to draft in Dynasty. Great player, but just a little leery on him at this point. The other two guys kind of have the same situation going on for me. It's uh, Jameer Gibbs, who I have at 24. His ECR is 17. And Damian Pierce, I have at 27. His ECR is 20 for Gibbs. It's not the talent. I I think he's the best. He's the most talented running back on this roster today. I think he's better than David Montgomery. I don't think too many people would disagree with that. Uh, But David Montgomery is a guy that's never had fewer than 30, 235 touches in a season in his career. So I do think David Montgomery being the 12th highest running back in the, in the league uh, for this season at 6 million bucks per I think he is going to get usage and we know the lions like to, you know, do those roles. Jamal Williams got all the touchdowns last year with 17. Deandre Swift only had five. So I'm afraid maybe David Montgomery gets that goal line, that touchdown role, which would take a lot of production possibly away from Jameer Gibbs. Once again, Jameer Gibbs at the end of the season should be the runaway starter. He is the better talent, but we got to worry about, you got to get to the playoffs first before you're in them. Uh, Damian Pierce. I, I like Pierce. Um, but Singletary signed there, and this is another guy that has never had uh, fewer than 180 touches in a season. They also signed Mike Boone. And look, Damian Pierce, once again, the most talented guy on the roster, but he wore down at the end of last season. He missed the last four games with the knee injury. I think they're ratcheting back his touches and his workload. And at the very best for Damian Pierce, he goes from Rex Burkhead and Dario Ogunbowale being his backups to Devin Singletary and Mike Boone. So these are players that are much more talented than the backups he had his rookie season. It's also a different head coach in D'Amico Ryans. I think maybe they just split up the carries a little more. Once again, Damian Pierce, great running back. I don't have issues drafting any of these guys, but I am just a little bit below ECR for all three of them. Yeah, Hall is really interesting because his, you know, really when you think about the J.K. Dobbins like knee injury comparison, it's really Javante Williams that has that sort of like next level of devastating knee injury. It's not Brees Hall. His is sort of a clean. I mean, anytime you have like an ACL tear, obviously it's not great, but like like it, it is it is a cleaner, theoretically easier recovery process than what we saw from Dobbins, where it clearly limited him all of last season. So Hall is really interesting. He's kind of similar to Gibbs in that. Well, if you can get him back and fully healthy and on, you know, kind of back 
back in the flow of things by the second half of the season, great, but you're going to be taking him early enough that you need him to contribute before that. The guy I really want to ask Debro about, because I know he disagrees, is Damian Pierce. Debro, you are higher than ECR and Damian Pierce going into draft season. So why do you disagree with Bogman? Why does Bogman hate Damian Pierce? Like, I mean, he says he doesn't, but then he's got him ranked as an RB3. Like, I, I think it's wheels up for Pierce. I think that you're looking at this Texans offense. They're going to run the ball. Like, how many San Francisco guys do we have on this staff to say, what, are, what do we think they're going to be pass heavy? Damian Pierce is going to get used a ton. And everything out of his efficiency metrics last year screams that you're walking into the second season and improved offense. We don't have to worry about Davis Mills. The offensive line could do nothing but play better because legit they were bottom three in adjusted line yards. They added Shaq Mason. They added a center in the second round. Say what you want about his prospect profile, but they added another body there. And Damian Pierce was the RB 16 and expected fantasy points last year. Like, even if we divide up some of this rushing volume uh, for Devin Singletary, and, I, and I'm, I love you, Boggs, but I am not worried about Mike Boone at all. Like, I understand. I that. still <laughs> think that Damian Pierce is going to smash, man. Like, I think he's going to be a top 24 guy. Well, and I, uh, at he, least he could be. And, and I don't I don't necessarily disagree with that, uh, you know, uh, but I, I just I don't. I don't know. You know, we, we paint the picture. Everybody wants black and white pictures. You got to have some gray area here. Singletary is a guy that is a much better pass blocker, much better. Top 25 out of, you know, out of the guys that had 10 pass block uh, attempts. I think he was top 25 and uh, Singletary or excuse me, uh, Pierce was way below average. I mean, he was 93 out of 102. So the gap, even with Pierce, you know, getting better at that part of the game, if Pierce is in there on a passing down, he ain't blocking. He's going to get a quarterback blown up, especially a young one like Stroud. So he's off the field on those plays where he can or, chip or, or he's leak out route, or something. Or, he could be running he, routes. Yeah, okay, he's running a route, but that what do you tell the defense then? Yeah, one less blocker blitz the quarterback. So uh, with Singletary's back there, you can disguise things a little more. I, I'm 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 just. I'm just painting the scenario where Singletary gets a little bit less than we expect. That's re all. Re really quickly, Boggs, I want to ask you, where do you think this Texans offense is going to finish this year? Because I know Debro and I are both really, really high on Stroud, and I think he mm -hmm. raises the floor of this offense more than people are going to give are giving him credit for right now. And again, he's a rookie. I get it. it's It's kind of risky. Sure. But I think that, I mean, that helps Pierce tremendously if this offense is actually scoring touchdowns and moving down the field more. Do you think this Texans offense has a little more juice than maybe people are giving it credit for? Um, I, I'm, I'm just not as excited as you guys are about the Texans offense. I still think there's a big learning curve for a rookie QB. It's a new coaching staff as well. Uh, we don't have a dominant wide receiver on this team yet. Schultz probably leads his team in targets. So yeah, I'm just, I think there's still a bottom third offense. Before we get to Debro's picks, let's take a second to talk about one of my absolute favorite Fantasy Pros tools. That is the Cheat Sheet Creator, which can be found at fantasypros.com slash draftwizards. I use the Cheat Sheet Creator every August to prepare for every draft, and you guys should too. It's a simple and fast way to create a cheat sheet specifically tailored to your league settings. You can use your own rankings or any combination of your favorite fantasy experts in the industry. You can make rankings that are just from Bogman and Debro if you want, although I don't know if I would do that. You can also add up to three custom player tags for each player and those tags will show up during the draft these can be things like top targets sleepers or even players to avoid speaking of let's get back to today's show d bro give me a couple of running backs that you were avoiding in drafts this year well since worm started this off with violence and tossing shade i might as well <laughs> continue it and i know bogman's not gonna like this but i am out on Najee harris uh ecr has him at rb12 and I'm not going to tell you that I don't have him as a top 24 guy. I'm not insane. I have met RB 17, but, and people want to point to, okay, was not Najee Harris was a lot better after he got the plate taken out of his shoe and his foot was better. And look, I, I'm not going to dispute that a ton. He was a lot better, but still we're not looking at like special, special metrics out of Najee Harris. Like his tackle breaking was good. He was top. He was 22nd in yards after contact per attempt, 10th and elusive rating in week six through 18 without the plate and with his foot feeling better, he still had the fourth lowest breakaway run percentage amongst this sample size of running backs. And for all the hopes and promise that we had Najee in, in his first season in the passing game, we saw the targets drop in that same sample, 11th worst in yards per route run. 
as much as people and Steelers fans want to see a lot of Najee, I'm telling you, Jalen Warren is going to get a lot of work in this backfield. He's going to get a lot of work in this backfield. We've already heard stuff coming out of camp, the team talking about it, like even beat writers saying like, look, Canada's not going to be able to keep this guy off the field. He's that good. And even in that same sample, we're talking about Najee playing better, feeling better. Jalen Warren still had 2.3 high value touches per game. Najee was not that far ahead of him at 3.6. If you look at the percentage of high value touches, so adding in the pass game as well to this equation, Jalen Warren ran laps around him, had 30% of the high value touches in this backfield. Najee only had 17%. I think this could dissolve into a straight up committee where Najee is taking the or most of the early down stuff. Come he on. gets replaced by Warren on why? Why, Boggs? Like, I mean, come on. Jalen Warren is a better pass catcher than Najee Harris has shown at any time in the NFL. It, it bears it out in the numbers. The guy had a 1.6 yards per route run. His target per route run rate was at 23%. These are really good numbers. I think Najee Harris can get into being a low-end RB2, maybe mid if he gets the touchdown help. But Jalen Warren is going to factor into this backfield. And if that's the case... There's no way in hell I can draft Najee Harris as an RB1. Debra, before we get to your other running back, I I mean, Bogman is going to need Icy Hot for his neck Uh for how much he's shaking his head over here. (laughs) Just look, you could go in now, Bogman. Why is Debra wrong here? Because, like, you got to take last year and wash uh, over half of it off. He was dealing with this Liz Frank injury from the get go. I don't care that the plate was removed week six. You could tell he still wasn't himself until about week 12 or 13. And he really took off. He dominated touches at that point. He looked like the Alabama guy that, that we had from last season. And also, stupid Matt Canada is still the OC of this team. They are going to be run on first, second, third, fourth down. Uh, that, that's what he wants to do. They drafted Broderick Jones, uh, the, the big left tackle out of Georgia, and also Darnell Washington, the best blocking tight end in this class to specifically help with the run game. Jalen Warren is much more talented than I gave him credit for. I will absolutely give you that. But when we're looking at metrics from last year, we got to remember that the offensive line was busted, that Kenny Pickett, the rookie, was making this obvious. He wasn't even allowed to call auto last season so they knew they were running the ball they ran the same plays over and over and Najee was not 100 so you add all of that up it's death by a thousand cuts for Najee I, I I think we're looking past his talent if we're not taking him as at least a low-end RB1 high-end RB2 and as a mid RB2 uh, D bros D bro knows what to do to get under my skin he knows what to do <laughs> so I had to start the show off this way. It had to be the first player I bring up. But odds will be a little bit better with the next guy I'm going to mention here. And that's Miles Sanders. And this is not... Look, can I tell you that I think Miles Sanders is an RB2? Yes. Does Miles Sanders have any kind of upside to where I think he could crest to be a high-end RB2 or an RB1? I do not see that ceiling. And so when I get in that range and there's a lot of these guys that are RB2s and I'm crafting narratives and saying, okay, but who can offer me upside in drafts? Who could I draft as an RB2 that could honestly outproduce that and be an RB1 or at least a high-end RB2? And I just don't see that for Miles Sanders. Like he had the perfect run out last year for his skill set to get all the early down work and he was still a schmo in the passing game. And for everybody that wants to sit here and say, well, yeah, but the team talked about that he's going to get receptions and they're going to use him in the passing. I don't see that happening. He had a putrid 0.28 yards per route run. Like that is Dwayne McBride level inefficiency, like horribleness in the passing game. He hasn't crested 1.00 yards per route run since his rookie season. So Miles Sanders is an early down banger on an offense that we have nothing but questions about, about like, do we think like, and I think it's almost being a little bit kind to rank Miles Sanders kind of where we're ranking him because we're saying, okay, he was the RB 21 in fantasy points per game. But he's going to a situation where, yes, okay, the offensive line is still going to be good, but it's a downgrade from Philly. It's not going to be a high scoring offense. And I'm sorry, like Adam Thielen, Jonathan Mingo, and all these other like replaceable parts and misfit toys, they're not going to be scoring a ton and ton of touchdowns this year. So even putting Miles Sanders into the RB2 range is really leaning on volume. 
but I don't see any hope for a ceiling for him in this offense and with his skill set. You're drafting a guy that your hope is that he pays off and he is the RB2 that you think he is. And for that, I'll just avoid him. I'll just take shots on RBs around him that I think have better upside. I I, I just have to say, as like you said, he doesn't have the upside to be like a high end number two. He, he was that last year. I know it's an entirely different offense, but I, I think there is room for this offense to maybe be better than you're expecting. Again, I'm talking about a rookie quarterback, but like Bryce Young was the number one overall pick. I think they got a major offensive coaching upgrade in Frank Reich. So like I'm not going out on a limb and saying like, oh, I think the Panthers are going to be, you know, a beastly team, top 10 offense or anything like that. But there, I think there is room for a little upside. I just think the downside is also there with Sanders, which is why I would be willing to avoid him, too. Um, if we, I actually uh, was the only one to pick the Panthers in our recent betting pros article about divisional winners, just because a the division stinks, but b I think the combo of Bryce Young and Frank Reich could actually be better than people are giving it credit for. Uh, so be sure to check out that article if you uh, want to look at it from the betting angle. Uh, unfortunately, we got to move on to the mid round guys here. So Bogman, give me your mid round running backs. These are running backs range from RB twenty one to RB forty that you are avoiding this year? Uh, let's go with Rashad White and uh, DeAndre Swift here. And uh, this one has multiple layers for Rashad White. Uh, he's pedestrian as a r- runner his rookie season. He was 40 uh, of the 47 with uh, 47 players with 100 rushing attempts. His 3.7 yards per carry ranked 43rd. Uh, his run grade on PFF out of uh, four. 42 rushers that qualified was 39. His yak was only better than his teammate Leonard Fournette among qualifiers yards after contact. Uh, He was 25th of 88 running backs in receiving grade uh, of running backs with at least 10 catches. His pass blocking grade was bad. The bucks are also, I I just refuse to believe that they're going to go into the season with Rashad white and nobody. It's Chase Edmonds. It's Sean Tucker, who was a UDFA behind him. I don't think if you're going to have Baker Mayfield or Kyle Trask as your QBs, and I like Dave Canales, and I like what he did with Geno Smith in Seattle last year, but I don't think he's going to be able to turn Baker Mayfield into a pro bowler. I don't think anybody can. So I think they're going to have to add to this backfield to run the ball more than they want. They're going to have to run the ball because the quarterback play is bad. So I think Zeke is a possibility. Uh, I think bringing back Leonard Fournette is an ugly possibility for them. Maybe they grab somebody uh, after cuts, but I think somebody else is getting added to this uh, backfield. And the main draw for Rashad White right now is touches. And I don't know if he's going to have as many by the time we get to the season. DeAndre Swift, I have him five spots below ECR. I have him at 31. ECR is 26 and a half. Everyone is excited for him, and I get it. He's a talented running back that goes to a run-heavy offense. Let's take a little bit of a closer look. Penny, not Swift, was our first option to add to the RB room. And in terms of talent, I might take Penny. He's always impressive until he gets hurt. So let's just push him out of the way and say that he's out due to injury because he will be. I mean, that that's what we've seen in his career. Now we have an offense that doesn't throw the ball to the running backs. Last season, 61 total running back targets. And Swift had 70 himself. Maybe they add some this season, but... After all, they, they, they did have 109 in 2021, but they just went to the Super Bowl. And Jalen Hurts led this team in rushing touchdowns with 13. Yes, maybe they want to ratchet that back, but how much? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So for me, these two guys are the ones that I'm leery on in this range. Yeah, D bro, I, I know you fully agree on Swift. You've got him down. You just mentioned an RB forty, uh, which is Ooh. is even lower. Um, I wanna I'm not actually sure. I, I'm not a Rashad White guy either. I'm not sure where you come down on him, D bro. I I'm avoiding Rashad White. Like in all my early best ball action, I maybe have drafted him once, maybe twice out of a hundred teams. I, I just everything that Bogman talked about is absolutely unequivocally right. Like he played good in the passing game. Okay, cool. And that's great. We want pass catchers, but he was abysmal as a tackle breaker on early downs. And so what are we talking about? Like if he's not as good as an early down talent, he can't break tackles. Okay. So it's not going to take much for some other running back to eat into that volume or hop him as the early down option. Like I'll take shots at the end of best ball drafts on Keyshawn Vaughn, who has produced well in small sample size and tackle breaking metrics. If they sign somebody and Boggs mentioned a few names, but let's throw this out here. So let's put another one in the mix here. If they sign Kareem Hunt 
Rashad White is dead. Like, maybe he plays on passing downs. Oh, wait, but that's Kareem Hunt. He can play in the receiving game as well. And as bad as Kareem Hunt was last Hunt's year. better between the tackles. Yeah. Yes. He still wasn't even as bad as Rashad White was with breaking tackles. Yeah. So I don't want anything to do with Rashad White. He feels like a classic dead zone running back to me. Yeah, we, we got to move on. Let's take a quick moment to mention the Fantasy Pros Draft Kit. Head to fantasypros.com slash kit and find everything you need to dominate draft day. That includes access to free expert rankings from Pat Fitzmorris, Derek Brown, and Andrew Erickson, plus tons of other free content like position primers, round-by-round -round strategies, and players to both target and avoid. But premium subscribers get even more exclusive content, plus access to our Fantasy Pros Discord community, where you can engage with our analysts through AMAs, live stages, events, and more. Check out fantasypros.com slash draft kit for your free winning ticket to the 2023 season. Debro, hit me with your mid-round running backs that you are avoiding. I got a three-pack of guys here. Um, first, we're going to start off with Alexander Madison. Again, we're talking about dead zone running backs. ECR has been RB22. I have been RB25. And honestly, that's I would like to push him lower. But I just want to be below consensus on Madison. And we're talking about guys that we're we're basing volume narratives on. Madison, that's really the best case scenario that you're looking at. I think that Minnesota is going to run a committee. I think we're going to see other guys involved in here. Because Madison is not Dalvin Cook. He's not even close to as talented as Dalvin Cook is. Even if you're talking about a lesser version of Dalvin Cook last year. His yards per route run has dropped in each of the last three seasons. His yards after contact per attempt has dropped every single season. And he only had one run of 15 plus yards and 74 carries last year. You can count me out. Out on Alexander Madison. The other two guys I'll quickly bring up here. Khalil Herbert. ECR thinks that they know who is going to be the guy to center and target in the Chicago backfield. RB 34. I have him as RB 44. I'm sorry, if I'm taking shots on Chicago Bears running backs, you can give me Roshan Johnson seven days out of seven, twice on Sunday, baby. Khalil Herbert, what is the Bear? What are the Bears shown all offseason? Like that they have a ton of faith in Khalil Herbert. Dave <laughs> Montgomery gone. They signed Deontay Foreman. They draft Roshan Johnson. Khalil Herbert's never been a good pass blocker. He's not a good receiver out of the backfield. 0. 0.62 yards per route run. Roshan can run laps around both these guys in the passing game. And while I know we're not going to talk about a ton of checkdowns from Justin Fields, if Roshan can take the passing downs and he's a better early down runner than Khalil Herbert or similar, even we'll put some respect on his name. If he's in even in a similar tier, Roshan can own this backfield. So I don't want anything to do with Herbert and Brian Robinson. I've talked about this on previous shows. I just don't want anything to do with the commander's backfield. Like, we don't have any clue what this team is going to look like from an offensive d play design. And no, you cannot get cut and paste Kansas City and Andy Reid stuff with Eric Bieniemy. I like Eric Bieniemy, but we still don't know what this is going to look like with him as a play caller standing on his own. And Brian Robinson, yeah, he got better as the season went on after coming back from, you know, offseason stuff, gunshot wound and stuff like that. But even when we saw him, like, down the stretch... His yards after contact per attempt was 2.77. That's okay, but it is definitely not great. He had the third lowest breakaway run percentage, and he was 28th in elusive rating out of 45 qualifying running backs. And then we're telling you that, like, he's not going to get the passing downs because Antonio Gibson, maybe Chris Rodriguez works into this backfield. <laughs> no, sorry. I don't want anything. I like big hats, <laughs> but I don't like B-Rob this year. <laughs> Uh, Bogman, quickly before we move on, is it fair to assume you also would be avoiding Herbert because of Roshan? Obviously, you're a Texas guy. <laughs> I mean, look, uh, he's actually the one guy that I have above ECR out of the three guys that uh, Debro mentioned. Not because I love him, but I do think that if there's a bet to lead this team in carries, I, it's still on Herbert for me, uh, even though both my Texas guys, Informant and Roshan, are there. But I, I'm, I'm with Debro in the fact that I try not to take Herbert and depend on him. If I take Herbert, it's he's my first bench back. I don't want him as a starter because he may not have the role. Alexander Madison, I'm a little higher than Debro, but I'm still below consensus on him. I have him as an RB2. I think he's a good volume play. Brian Robinson, uh, look, he's a he's a first 
you know, first down, second down thumper. That's what he is. He can catch the ball. He has the ability to do it. I would say he's below average, and I like Antonio Gibson as a whole better. Plus, they were sniffing around Kareem Hunt earlier. Wouldn't be surprised if they added back. And ain't Chris Rodriguez. I don't like him. But, uh, I mean, uh, they've already got two guys. Gibson is already better, and they might add somebody. Yeah, I'm probably out on Robinson as well. Bogman, as we move to the late round running backs, this is RB 41 or later. Give me a couple of guys here that you're avoiding. Hard to hate anybody down here because they are so low, but I I got two that I'm avoiding. Uh, The first one is Chase Edmonds. I mean, I just don't believe in Chase Edmonds in terms of skill or staying on the field or being a backup for Rashad White. So I'm just not, even if I have Rashad White, I'm not handcuffing. He is nothing to me pass. I think Sean Tucker will move past him on the depth chart fairly quickly. But the other guy, and and maybe our our, uh, Saints fan will disagree with me here a little bit, is Kendra Miller. Just a little bit. I'm I'm at 56. His ECR is 51. I just I want to know how long Kamara is going to be suspended. I know the the trial is supposed to start at the end of this month. Maybe it's delayed again. They signed Jamal Williams, and Kendry Miller has not been able to work with the team yet because he tore his meniscus in January, and he is still recovering. He's supposed to be back for training camp, but any delay will push him back. So I'm just I'm on Jamal Williams hype hype train here that's who i'm uh picking out of the saints backfield this year it's not gonna be ken Dray quite yet d bro mr saints fan do you agree with that uh boggs where do you have ken Dray again 56 oh wow ecr I mean, is 51 so i'm only five spots down i mean i i i didn't know i was higher than ecr and ken Dray, but apparently i am i mean i've got him at rb 46 but again we talk about like you get down this area of running backs it comes down to not so much like being above or below. It's 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 really like I'm putting him against the other players in this range. And a few of them I'm going to bring up. Like, I mean, professional transition here, guys. I will draft Kendra Miller over Jarrett McKinnon. He's one of these guys after RB40 I want nothing to do with. Because Jarrett McKinnon, and it, we cannot be chasing last year's results for players. Nine that, touchdowns from McKinnon last year. Insane. And, and when we saw him blow up in the last part of the season, like weeks 13 through 18, guys, Jerick McKinnon led the entire NFL, not just running backs, not just wide receivers, tight ends, everybody in receiving touchdowns. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> that's not coming back, people. Eight <laughs> receiving touchdowns in, in a span of five, six games? No. I, I, I don't believe that's coming back. Now, can he be the passing down back? Sure. I'm just willing to draft other guys ahead of him. ECR has him at RB42. I've got him at RB47, and I could drop him lower because... Yeah, I'll take a swing on Kendra Miller, even though I'm not. I haven't been 45, D-Bro, and I feel like I'm high on him. Yeah, same, man. Like, I I just, I want to be below consensus on McKinnon. Like, he's an older running back. He was terrible on early down, so you're really hoping just pass game utility. And if if any of these wide receivers takes a step forward, Sky Moore, Rasheed Rice, one of these guys hops forward and is a consistent target earner in this offense, those short area targets for Jarrett McKinnon are going to decrease. So I want to be out on that. Um, And I'll take shots on Kendra Miller, even though I don't, the, the pathway for Kendra Miller is murky. It's foggy at best, but I'll take that type of pathway over one that I just don't see coming back and staying on the murky pathways. Devon a chain. I I've got him buried in my ranks compared to ECR. ECR has him at RB 46. I've got him at RB 55. Like, I think how Boggs feels about Kendra Miller is how I feel about Devon A-Chain. Like, what is the run out for Devon A-Chain to surpass this, to be an RB3, hell, to own this backfield? We've also heard Dalvin Cook rumors to South Beach. Could that happen? They brought back Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson. I think if you want to look at, regardless of however you want to look at this, do we think that Devon A-Chain is going to be the goal line back, even if they don't sign Dalvin Cook? No, I don't see that happening. Not for his size and his build and his skill set. Like, is he a better early down runner than possibly most people give him credit for? Sure. Does that mean they're going to give him the money touches inside the five or 10? No, this backfield is going to be split up. You're really hoping for Devon A-Chain to blow it out in his rookie season. What does he need? Okay, Dalvin Cook to not go to Miami. Uh, Maybe an injury to Raheem Mostert or Jeff Wilson. All of these things or maybe all three. 
Yeah. I mean, you can't um, say I mean, that part that's not that unlikely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can't say that that uh, part uh, sarcastically. The he, the one thing uh, I look look McKinnon way more valuable in PPR just for the receptions. Like we know that, so value him there. Half and in, in standard, not so much. But Devin A. Chain, the one thing I'll push back on a little bit. Uh, uh, Debro here is that this guy doesn't need a wealth of touches to get it going because he's an Olympic level sprinter. So, you know, if he, I think even if Cook signs, I don't think his, I think that's more detrimental to Wilson and Mostert than it is to A chain because A chain is going to be a 10 to 15 touch guy, regardless of who's in the backfield. He's not going to get much more than that at any point in the season because of his slight frame and his rookie season and all that. But he can run between the tackles because that's all the stupid Aggies did last year. And he got he has a lot of experience with it uh, for a smaller guy. So I, I, I'll push back on H.A. a little bit, but not not a ton because the, the ceiling is limited because of his lack of touches. Yeah, I get where you're coming from, Debra, too. But like, I, I mean, is I'm not sure there are very many coaches I would trust more to get a guy with a chain speed and skill set into better positions than Mike McDaniel. I mean, like everybody talked about how the Dolphins were the perfect fit for him. And he went there and I, I just. Team. Yeah, I mean, like, again, go this late, pure upside play, I, I would be happy to, to to take him. I do want to ask you, actually, Debro, you met, you shared your opinion on Miller. I want to ask you about Chase Edmonds, because you actually are even lower on him than Bogman is. You have him down <laughs> at RB89, if I'm looking at these rankings right. I mean, I, I just don't, I think there's an easy case where Chase Edmonds doesn't even make it out of camp, man. Yeah. Like, he's, he's not been good over the last season or two, and... I don't look at him factoring into this backfield. Like, like Boggs talked about Sean Tucker. I talked about Keyshawn Vaughn, like, I, or I think they signed somebody. I think that there's a really good case of like, maybe Edmonds doesn't even see the field in week one, isn't on the roster. And that's not a guy that I want to be. And I know, I know if it's, you listen to, to previous episodes, previous, like last year and stuff, I like Chase Edmonds a lot, but guess what? We got new information, different team, different situation. Mm -mm. It's just residual no Austin Eckler comparisons that are keeping Chase Oof. Edmonds, uh, you know, uh, his value in ECR and all that stuff elevated because it's not what he's done on the field at all. Uh, so, so far, you guys have each talked about seven running backs. That gives us a total of 14. We want to have an aesthetically pleasing 15 running backs in total. So I will throw one out here and get your guys' opinion on it. The guy I'm avoiding late is Tyler Algier. And we see this a lot where it's a day three running back who comes out and is way better than expected. And then they go out and draft a running back higher than next year. We saw it with Michael Carter. And that was with Brees Hall drafted in the second round. The Falcons drafted Bijan, of course, at eighth overall. They are going to use him a ton. Arthur Smith, we have seen when he has a bell cow that he likes. When he had Derrick Henry, he runs him into the ground. To me, Algier is nothing other than a handcuff. And he's going in the low 40s. I think he's ECR 43 right now. That is too high to me. Debra, I know you're about 15 spots lower on him. Uh, so I'm definitely avoiding Algier. Again, I know Debra agrees with that. Bogman, what do you think? Well, I, I'm I'm a little I, I'm not I'm not going to agree with you. I am below ECR in Algier because I do. Uh, obviously, Bijan's my guy. He's a Texas guy, right? Uh, so I love Bijan. I think he gets all the carries, but I'm just a little leery because of what we've seen some young running backs go through, like Jonathan Taylor went through this with Naheem Hines and Frank Wright insisting upon Naheem Hines. Three of the last four weeks in half PPR, Tyler Algier finished as an RB1. The one week he didn't, he was RB13, so the first RB2. So I think we are we are viewing this as all Bijan, all go from the start where I do think that Algier still has a role, more than Cordell Patterson also, but there are some good backups behind Bijan, which is why overall I'm lower than consensus on him. I have him at RB5, where most people have him between three and four. So, And I love Bijan, obviously, but yeah. Tyler Algier is talented, and Cordell Patterson isn't a nothing in the run game either. So I'm just a little leery. That's well, all. I, all I heard was more UT shade. That's all I heard. I mean, I know you, UT shaded shade. Deontay, <laughs> you shaded Deontay Foreman, you shaded... Hated Roshan Johnson, and now we have Algier concerns, Bog. Oh, that's whatever. all I hear. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's realistic because it's coming from the Longhorns fan. How about that? <laughs> I'm fine, fine. Take that angle. Counter Take that point. angle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, so you're a little lower on Bijan, which is very shocking uh, for everybody to hear, Bogman. Give me a player. Just so very, we're very negative today. Give me a player that you love coming into this season. 
Uh, you know what? We we shaded Alexander Madison. So let me tell you, I love Ty Chandler as a handcuff oh. to him or a late pickup. This guy is explosive. What he reminded me of when I watched him in North Carolina was Willie Parker that can catch. And Willie Parker had a great role in the NFL for the Steelers for a while, but he couldn't catch. I am excited about what Ty Chandler can do with this opportunity. Debro, give me a player you're excited about, too. Um, I mean, if we want to stay in the Minnesota backfield, I'll give you Dwayne McBride, baby. Ooh, um, I smell a bet, bro. Oh, <laughs> baby. I didn't know we were going to do this today, but I'm here for it, man. <laughs> I mean, Dwayne McBride, it just everything lines up, man. I think you have a replaceable talent in Alexander Madison. Ty Chandler, while I think he is a good player, I don't think that he's anything special. Um, Kenny Nwangu, I like the athleticism. That's I'll take shots that. on him, but... Dwayne McBride showed that if, look, if if that talent translates to the NFL field and we've seen guys, we don't have testing metrics. And yeah, Dwayne McBride, we haven't got positive blurbs because he's been dealing with injuries so far in the offseason. But we're talking about a guy that was top 12 in every efficiency metric that you could point out for collegiate running backs of the last two seasons. That's a guy that I want to bet on. And yeah, I get the draft capital stuff, but really, like people are talking about draft capital. It's like. Okay, Ty Chandler was like a fourth rhyme back. Like, can I, uh, did, did, can I did McBride like? have more uh, catches or fumbles in college? I can't remember. Can you remind me on that? He one, didn't McBride? catch any hardly any passes, Boggs. But I don't think they're throwing to the running backs a ton this year. So, mm, okay, that's right. fair. Uh, but Cross puts ball on the ground. <laughs> Guy, right. guy puts ball in his <laughs> arms and scores touchdowns <laughs> and breaks tackles. Can Ty Chandler against say that? the G five? Well, he was playing against Power Five teams. He wasn't okay. playing against the G five. So okay. well, everybody watching on YouTube, make sure that you like and subscribe so you can see at the end of the year when we have Bogman back on. I'm sure he'll be on again plenty of times before then, but he'll come back on at the end of the year and we'll see how this bet, whatever it ends up being, uh, <laughs> turns out between Ty Chandler and Dwayne McBride. Well, we got to sure set the bet, Warren. We didn't even you, set you the bet. You want to do that right now? Are you ready yeah, to commit to something? Yes, okay, yes. We'll throw it McBride, out there then. fantasy points per game over Ty Chandler. Boggs, yes? yes Two we weeks with just a mustache, D, bro. How about that? <laughs> Oh, hell no. I'm not shaving my beard. Oh, come on. No way, dude. No way. Not that confident, Dwayne McBride. No way. Uh, oh, God. I, I'd rather, like, grow my hair out and do a show with no hat on than do that. <laughs> oh, be okay. That. We, we can do an Afro show uh, because I definitely have <laughs> It would now be an Afro. Right. I'd be looking like well, a mad scientist out here. <laughs> mad scientist versus Afro show. We're, d- lock it up. It's done. I'll do that. I'll we'll do that. that. The, the Afro show <laughs> bet is locked in. Dwayne McBride <laughs> versus Ty Chandler. Fantasy points per game is what we're saying in half yep. PPR? Yes. Yep. Let's go. PPR. If they if there's injuries and stuff, obviously we'll uh, you know we'll take that into consideration. So everybody, like I said, be sure to like and subscribe so you can follow that bet during the year. And uh, also comment on this video. Let us know which running backs you are out on this year. Uh, don't forget the Fantasy uh, Pros Football Draft Kit. Don't forget the Cheat Sheet Creator. All the great stuff we have on Draft Wizard. Be sure to check it out. We're now past the Fourth of July. We are officially in fantasy draft prep and fantasy draft season it's got fishbowl drafts coming up in the next couple of days very exciting time so be sure you're following us the entire way for bogman and d bro thank you everybody for tuning in i am ryan we will see you guys next time